Wait, is there something dangerous in this box today? Because you guys have mentioned explosion, poisonous. <laughs> Fragile's written four times, or is it Fragile? Get it, Finding Nemo, get it. Cerucite, this is a very obscure mineral, but I do know it's fragile. It's really heavy. I'm kind of worried, is it gonna blow up? Like what's gonna, what did you guys do to the box? This is super cool looking, it is really cool. It's. I like the crystal structure on this. So we have two examples of Cerucite. I think it is a three and a half on the most scale. I could be mistaken, but three to three and a half. It's very soft, very dangerous. Dust can scratch this. What I first noticed was this color. It, it's clear, but it, there's a little maybe hint of pink or something to it. And I like the crystal structure. It's heavier than you would think. And I think that's because of the lead content. Man, I've learned a lot. Cerasite is a lead carbonate mineral. The chemical composition is PbCO3. Pb is lead, C for carbon, and O for oxygen. Um, the color can vary. You can see two examples here. Whites, yellows, browns, reds. It comes from the Latin word cerusa, and that is the Latin term for white lead. The mineral is more well known to collectors, not as much jewelry or gemstone people. Um, if you're a mineral, collector, it is very probable that you've heard of Cerasite. Cerasite is doubly refractive. Other doubly refractive gems that we've had on the show, uh, Sapphire, Emerald, that's basically when light goes through the stone, it splits, which I think is super cool because I never would have thought that this would be doubly refractive. And you can't really tell looking at it like you can with other stones like Calcite. You can tell pretty easily that it's doubly refractive. It is known for twinning, which we've also talked about on the show before. And you can see an example of this right here. I wanna be super careful. You can see it's basically like two crystals are growing. And I think that's where we get like these really cool patterns. So yeah, super brittle. It's super, super hard to cut. That's why you really don't see it in a lot of like faceted gems. You know, cutting it can be very challenging and can raise the cost. This is definitely a stone mostly for like mineral collectors. Okay, another box I have to be super careful of. No card. Whoa. This is what you should have started off with. The reason Cerasite is so hard to find as a cut stone is because it's super hard to cut. It's a three, three and a half on the Mohs. It's very brittle. It's um, susceptible to like heat damage. So you have to be a very, very talented cutter with lots of patience. Um, and also the material itself is pretty hard to find. So the fact that we have, not only do we have a Cerasite on the channel today, um, but it's 17.51 carats. And like any, I, can, I can't think of a stone like, you know, garnet, um, sapphire, diamond. I would love to have a 17.51 carat diamond or a sapphire or a emerald. But the fact that we have cerasite, which is hard to find, hard, extremely hard to cut. I mean, that's pretty sweet. This is something that I didn't think we'd see at JTV. I mean, again, Elizabeth like goes down into Gringotts Bank or something and talks to the little trolls and they all, they find this and, and bring it back up. I mean. It's, it's fascinating what we have here and all the different specimens. And I'm not even gonna take this out of the box, but this is super, super cool. I figured today's episode would just be a couple specimens and we'd tell you how challenging it was to cut. Like never in a million years did I expect us to actually have a cut stone today. So for all you gem collectors, this is what you're looking for. All right, so looking at this rough right here, this is the orthorhombic crystal system. Like I mentioned earlier, we've talked about triclinic, I think we've talked about hexagonal and trigonal crystal systems with Elizabeth. So just remember, sericite and orthorhombic. For those of you who are interested in learning more about crystal systems and don't want to wait for another video, um, feel free to do some research and comment below and let us know what you found. If you all remember the video we did about um, fairy cross starlight, that is another example of twinning. Um, so go ahead and check out the link that we're going to pop up on screen if you want to learn more about twinning. And that is um, something that if you're interested in learning more about, comment below. You know, we're always looking for ideas ideas from you all. What are you interested in? What do you want to learn more about? Um, so any comments or suggestions will help us make these videos even, even more enticing and exciting for you fellow gem nerds. All right, so let's take a closer look. I'm sorry this is in the box. I really don't feel comfortable taking it out because I know how much this means to JTV and I don't want anything to happen to it. Um, take a closer look at the stone um, and how that's faceted. You know, faceted sericite is extremely rare to find and it takes a very talented lapidary to cut this stone. So we're lucky to have it today on the channel.
much for watching today. I hope you enjoyed learning about sericide as much as I did. I think it's fascinating how soft it is and how we're still able to find a cut stone. So thank you to the geologists, gemologists, and curators at Jewelry Television for securing these pieces for us today. And for all you out there, don't forget to like and subscribe and share this video on your social media page. We want all potential gem lovers and, and gem nerds just like me to be able to learn more about these stones that we've all fallen in love with. So help us share and spread the word about gemology and we'll catch you next time. Thank you for watching.